so I think my therapist my physiotherapist must be literally telling me a Hitler because I'm very bad when it comes to that I will not let it go even for that one count I'll be like why didn't you correct hello everyone welcome to brain hydration podcast this is your host Trishla on today's episode we have Dr. Stuti who is the founder of Kotakin which is a physiotherapy clinic with the Pilates setup she is a physiotherapist and a fully certified Stott Pilates instructor with an experience of 12 years. We had such a mindset shift conversation with her that if you listen to this podcast keenly, it will be impactful on your fitness routine. I tried to get the best of the tips out of her by curating some very interesting and trending questions. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? Super, super excited. Wow. Okay, uh, so I think I have seen you uh, greeting people always very enthusiastically. You're having this beautiful smile on your face all the time. How do you do this? Because we all are going through some or the other thing. And it's very hard to keep up that smile every day. And you do it every damn single day. (laughs) How do you maintain this consistency? What is the secret behind this? So to be very honest, there is no secret. And as you said, right, that, you know, every day is a different day. Like, you know, some days you're really excited in the morning. Some days you're feeling low. Yeah. But I think for me, when I enter my workplace, okay, I feel that everything changes for me. So I'm a very different person when I enter. So even my ride to my workplace, I always talk to myself. And I'm really excited because that first morning when you meet all your clients, you know, just saying them good morning just uh, asking them how are they feeling all that actually gives me amazing happiness and I think that may be the reason because I'm always like so bright when I come you bring a vibe inside the room thank you but no (laughs) as I said that you know even like before coming there are days when I'm not feeling up to it but I think when I enter clients are one of the reason I think I feel that yeah nice okay so for the people who don't know what is your work tell me something about it so uh, I'm basically a physiotherapist as you know and I have added Pilates to my physiotherapy right. so it wasn't easy 12 years back because mm. at that point no one knew what Pilates so that, yeah, was true. even to be very honest no one knew how to pronounce it yeah so I had a lot of people who would have said at that point that are you sure you're a physiotherapist why would you want to add something yeah which is first of all very new mm. no one knows how it's going to be in terms of result oriented mm. right for my right. patients because I used to deal with only rehab patients at that point okay then I started doing with normal individuals working on their strength flexibility balance right. stability all of that and in that I used Pilates as a part of exercise routine okay but uh, Pilates was very new in India but it wasn't new outside India right so when I started going deeper in that mm. and I was like no this is what I want to add because I wanted to do something which was different first of all and secondly which can be a next step to physiotherapy so let's say if a patient comes to me i made them pain free but then what like they can't directly go to gym yeah so there is something which helps them to get back all their strength their flexibility their overall goals and then doing whatever they wanted to do in day-to-day routine is where i added pilates at that point and then you know with more and more exposure with all the trainings i went as and when you know what was required I kept doing all the courses and here I am <laughs> okay so for again for the people who don't know what is Pilates yeah. that I think I'm now it is quite trending yeah. in India yeah. because even celebrities are doing yeah. it yeah. but still people wouldn't know what happens in a Pilates center true true can you give us a small brief sure. about it so Pilates is a mind and body form of exercise okay so like how we have different form of exercise like Zumba aerobics gymming strength training so pilates is also one form of exercise but how it's different than other form of exercise is one it's one of the safe form of exercise because all the movements are more controlled okay now second thing is as it's a mind and body connection you need to focus on a lot of things like your breath your breathing your core activation 
सो यू आर कॉन्स्टेंटली वेरी माइंडफुल अबाउट ईच एंड एवरी मूवमेंट करेक्टिंग ईच एंड एवरी पॉस्चर एंड द फन एलिमेंट इज देर आर इक्विपमेंट्स वट वी यूज इन पिलाटिस देर आर प्रॉप्स वट वी यूज इन पिलाटिस सो देर इज अ मैट प्रोग्राम एंड देर आर इक्विपमेंट प्रोग्राम ओके सो इट्स सेम फोकस वेर यूर फोकसिंग ऑन योर पॉस्चर करेक्शन यूर फोकसिंग ऑन योर स्ट्रेंथनिंग फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी बैलेंस स्टेबिलिटी कॉर्डिनेशन all of those things but in a much more controlled way mm-hmm. in a safer way so mm-hmm. which uh, i would say like if you are a patient with pain i can make you do if you are someone with no pain and athlete i can make you do it if there is someone who is an 80 year old which i see like right now also i can make them do okay. so you have a lot of variations and modifications so everyone can get out of it what goals they are looking for okay uh so now you have your own two centers in amdabad and uh, might be it, it might have been a journey to start your own business it's not easy uh especially i think for a women hmm. so would you like to highlight few points from your entrepreneurial journey like how did you start who was your support system hmm. uh what were your obstacles so uh, to be very honest i was extremely passionate like from day one extremely mm. career oriented i think uh, my my parents and the only child so i think okay. you, know, you you are always like you know that center of attraction mm. so at that point also i was very sure that you know i want to do something like my dad my dad is a businessman yeah. so at that like being a kid also i knew that i want to do something different one yeah. and something of my own mm. but i i feel that there's always a journey behind it so right now everything looks very fancy very of course. good but no of course it started from a scratch because there was no one in our family or around who was a physiotherapist and physiotherapy was very different at that point mm. so when i wanted to add pilates to that i think it was something which i was taking a risk to be very mm-hmm. honest to see how it's going to go so i started with home visits i think very few people know about it and i had a very small team like just two therapists okay i worked for like uh, i think more than a year mm-hmm. i worked as soon as i came out then i was doing home visits simultaneously with a smaller team where i used to train them at my house at oh. my dad's office mm-hmm. because of course we didn't have a space at that point yeah. and then i did that for 5 years mm-hmm. okay so i used to see patients i used to do their consultations i used to train my team i used to send them for home visits i used to go for home visits so that's how i did it for 5 years and 5 then, years yeah 5 years till 2015 i still do home visits on and off but i used to do 10 10 home visits a day So it was a crazy and wow. I used to love it. I, I still I still tell people I used to love home visits. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have gone to each and every area of Ahmedabad. Oh. <laughs> so but it was it was a very fun phase. And then I think in 2015 so we were getting married and my husband to be very honest he's someone who pushes me. I'm I get very comfortable at times. Okay? I'm like, "Oh, now it's everything mm-hmm. is good. Now let me just chill. Mm-hmm. Let me do whatever is happening for some time then we'll you know do it." Yeah. But he's the one he always pushes and he was the one who said that um now if you want to grow yeah you know you have to take the next step which is of course getting a space doing further courses and all of that and mm. pilates courses doesn't it never happened also at that point in India so you have to travel you have to travel to Dubai you have to travel to US Canada for those courses happening mm. because i wanted to do certification mm. i didn't wanted to just do for the sake of it So all that was happening simultaneously we got the space in 2016 when we mm. did our first setup mm. which was just two reformers mm. and then uh, at that point in 6 months we felt that no this was doing good mm. so then we decided to take the next space so we rented out the second one we added chair we added reformer right then in that one year we felt that okay this is doing really good so maybe you know there is a scope to really expand hmm. so my first location we expanded three times in 2019 the full expansion got over where we were having i think eight reformers rehab reformers wow. eight chairs one cadillac and lot more now i don't remember also exact numbers but yeah and then 2020 covid happened Now when covid happened we started doing everything virtual right for that 3 4 months mm-hmm. then we started gradually back because being a physiotherapy clinic we were allowed to function and okay. with patients it's not so easy that everything can be possible online right so then we get we got back to work i started mm-hmm. having my team gradually so we were a team of 2 then 4 5 like that in 2021 we figured out that okay there is a scope to have a second location 
and again my husband all all like all <laughs> progression is him the business I, mind yeah, business mind he's the business mind <laughs> yeah. i'm more technical right now so we have divided our work yeah i'm purely technical i train my team i train my clients consultations creating the programs hmm. everything other than that is him mm-hmm. and then we took that call that no uh, we can do it if you want to deal with more clients if mm-hmm. you want to see more clients mm-hmm. and then the first step was to create a bigger team mm-hmm. so that i was doing simultaneously and then in 2021 to be precise the end of 2021 we decided a space actually 2022 if i'm not wrong and okay. then last year the space got finally made 8 9 months and then yeah we now it's a beautiful location 10 months and yeah. we are there yeah but i feel that all the difficult part was to really stick to what you believe in that's that's that one thing yeah because i feel that uh, when you're growing you get a lot of options which are very easy options mm. like you know you you can work a little lesser and just reach there yeah but that little lesser work and reaching there is not something what is going to be right mm. so it's like giving up on your quality which i feel that a lot of times that is one thing which i feel that you have to at so many points in life you have to decide whether you want quality or quantity mm. and when you are in all that phase it's very easy to like just go on quantity mm. but if like i am from day one very clear i'm very ethical person so a lot of times there has been where i'm like i'll put my foot down i'm like no i don't want to do it it's okay yeah. you know i'll i'll get lesser clients but i i want to sleep at the end of the day very satisfied that you know if i've seen 10 clients a day that has to be really satisfactorily and yeah. not like you know just for the sake of it so i think that is one thing which i feel was challenging second is the team building mm. which i found a uh, challenging because i want quality mm. and i'm a very i have an ocd when it comes to work for perfection yeah so i think my therapist my physiotherapist must be literally telling me a hitler because i'm very <laughs> bad when it comes to that i will not let it go even for that one count i'll be like why didn't you correct so that's that's me like you know like people don't know me mm. like that because of course they see me as a mm. that teacher when i'm teaching them but when it comes to so i've created a training at kotak and if someone wants to join the team they have to go through 6 months oh. to actually be a part of the team not like you know in a month or in mm. 15 20 days they can learn things and go but i think that is one of the reason that i have been able to work on the quality part and, and i, I can vouch on that thank you <laughs> so i think it's very difficult right because yeah. see when you have clients coming mm. and when you are telling them that no no we don't have therapist right now ready you are missing on your business for sure but then to make yourself in that state of mind that it's okay mm. but once my teacher is ready mm. then they would be able to see much more efficient way mm. so i think these are the things what i felt that was tough but at the same time because i did that it made me reach where i am yeah so yeah yeah so i think um uh, for the listeners who do not know but i'm attending your uh, pilates class and i've yeah. seen the difference so i used to go uh, at some other place right. uh, for pilates and uh, i've seen the difference uh, you were talking about quality and i've hmm. seen hmm. how there is human touch how they are particular about small things yeah. about even about yeah. like one small posture how yeah. they are particular about it so i think you have a very fantastic team thank you thank you touch wood <laughs> <laughs> yeah touch wood but yeah okay um so uh, as an entrepreneur what would be one myth hmm. which you have come across which people have for entrepreneur or for a business Okay. and what advice would you give to all the aspiring entrepreneurs out there so uh, one i feel people feel that if you are if you have your own business mm. it means you are free mm. like you have people working for you mm. that you know if i have a team of 14 therapists people feel that why am i saying no to them to meet them during the week or to meet in the evenings or like but they don't understand that the bigger the team gets the mm. more and more your time goes So mm-hmm. to be very honest, there were Saturdays I didn't used to work second half. To like even I didn't used to work first half to take sessions. I used to just do consultations. That was the time. But in this eleven months, my Saturdays are gone because it's not just about the clients, right? It's about your team, you training them, you answering their questions, you creating programs, 
So I feel that the work actually increases when you expand, mm. when you grow. And I think when you have your own business, at the end of the day, you're responsible, right? You are answerable mm. to yourself. So I think that is one Answerable myth. to people too, answerable you to your team everyone, too. everyone, right? But your own self, because see, when you are into a business, you are spending that much amount of money to create that. Mm. So then it can't be something just like a, you know, whimsical thing that, okay, aaj kiya, kal nahi kiya. You mm. can't do it. You have to be present. Whatever it is, whatever you are going through your head in the night, in the morning, you have to be present. Mm. So I think that that few things, people feel that it's easy, but I feel it's not easy. It's more responsibility. But at the same time, of course, it's the passion, right? Mm. Which drives you to get up every day in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I feel that it just balances out at the end of the day that you know that you're working hard for it but when you see your patients in our uh, case like i have just a client who has done i think eight sessions okay and she had the knee issue in eight sessions when she messages you that's so they have never felt this much better in last one year that itself you wow. know you feel something else so you don't even feel like okay okay theek hai char ghante extra kaam kar liya it's okay yeah. but it's worth it yeah. So I feel that that small things matters a lot. Mm. So this is my one thing which I feel that people just have that notion that oh you have a business so you, you are like all set you don't need to do much. <laughs> okay and what would you like to tell the aspiring entrepreneurs? Um just invest in yourself. I I personally feel that if I see my journey Yusha it's a lot of uh, time and money both involved because of the courses and everything what I've done. So I started my course first in 2012. I finished in 2019. Hmm. So that seven years of you know traveling, doing your courses, you know it's it's not easy. Like of course you travel to nice places, but at the end of the day, eight eight hours you are in that academy hmm. where you are like really you know in front of your teacher and doing those stuff. Hmm. But if I wouldn't have invested, if I wouldn't have exposed myself to all of this, I don't think I would be here where I am. So I think to invest. in what you believe in in your own self is extremely important one secondly i feel that um everyone has to start from a scratch mm-hmm. so when i started i wasn't at all about money at that point even now i don't feel that is first thing mm-hmm. it was always about quality so i think somewhere if you are into quality business if you feel that no it's okay to deal with five clients but i want to really work on the quality part Mm. then maybe that actually uh, gets you more further than dealing with 100 clients but not giving the quality mm. so i think i feel this two things if it's you know seen in your mind mm. that okay this is what you have to focus on mm. then it's not difficult mm. and i think whether it's a job or a business you have to work mm. just because i have a business i still work 10 to 12 hours in mm. fact at times i joke that you know at least in job your eight hours done and you're done yeah and you don't even have to yeah, worry you here have you have to worry. worry about finance Everything. you have to worry about your employees you have Everything. to worry about so many things yeah because today only someone messaged me i'm not feeling well <laughs> so i'm like oh my god four clients who will see you so you know that things of course i have an amazing team where people understand mm. each other and someone would do extra hours and mm. all of that mm. but you on your head you are like okay i can't say directly no to a client of course mm. if there is no option i'll say no Mm. rather than I, i will always try to adjust mm-hmm. so yes i think when you mention uh, the point like uh, in the start you have to choose quality you have yeah. to choose consistency yeah. i think uh, for the aspiring people or the people who are young hmm. there is internship yeah so yes. they really have to be serious about that true i think that really helps true because in my journey internship helped exactly so, so we have the same yeah. so we have an observation period where a physio and us both are like allowed to say no to each other if we feel this is not what we are looking for okay at a very like friendly level so let's say uh, if you have come to kotakin you stay there for 10 15 days you just observe our style of working mm. we give you few things in terms of a study material so mm. that you get used to in what we believe in mm. same way we see you how you are adjusting around because vibe plays a major role right mm. like you need to connect mm. after that comes the internship where i teach and i teach all my therapists so it's not that like my physio are going to teach the mm. newbie or something like that so and i'm very clear that if i'm giving time to someone that has to be worth it because then i'm giving those hours so it's okay that of course everyone comes and goes that's a different story but i should be very sure about that person that mm. you know eventually that's 3 months 4 months 5 months down the lane is going to represent kota ke 
Mm. So, but I think right now people want to directly start. They, mm. they don't believe that they need to learn, mm. I feel, which I, I think I wasn't like that. Even all my friends, we, we wanted to learn. We wanted to be like, how much we can learn more rather than how fast we can work. Because if we learn, yeah. then working is easy. But if we yeah. don't know anything, how yeah. can we tell any patient that, okay, this is the skill what we have. And you know, mm. can you just come to us for the same? Mm. So I think that's where seeing so many interviews and everything. I, this is one sad thing which I feel that yeah. I hope young people. Yeah, understand. because uh, we also live in this hustle culture. Yeah. Like people getting uh, a billionaire at twenty. We hear keep on hearing so these true. things, and so that true. is why people who are twenty one, twenty two, yeah. they just yeah. want to keep on earning fast. Quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but when we were, I think twenty one, twenty two, we would do internship. Exactly. And you know, we didn't even used to earn for like three years or something. Exactly. But you learn so much. So you true. learn also the good thing is you learn from their mistakes. Exactly. From the entrepreneur's yeah, mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah. So true. And then you can apply that in your business. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that should not be anything about feeling bad about doing an internship because in fact internship is a phase. I tell my physiotherapist very clearly, I'm a very like clear person when mm. it comes to talking mm. to my phys mm. physios that guys, whatever I'm going to teach you, it's all what I've done the courses, it's worth lakhs of rupees mm. in which you are yeah, getting yeah, it yeah. free of cost, right? In fact, we are paying you for the internship. Yeah. I tell them very clearly, if you know anyone says, <laughs> I'm, I'm very tired and I just have very lot of hours and I'm like, Dude, don't you dare say that. <laughs> but then I think, see, you know, when you're too young, um, of course, you make mistakes. Yeah. But then I have seen that, you know, one who just passes that phase, then everything is. A piece How of do cake. you maintain uh, your enthusiasm and energy throughout the day with so much grace? and positive oh, energy. I'm glad that you feel that but at times <laughs> I feel like oh my god I'm exhausted at the end of the day but then I, I think I tell myself very clearly that whether it's a 7.30 a.m. morning client or mm -hmm. 6 p.m. evening client mm -hmm. I have to give both of them the same color the same, yeah. right so there is nothing in the world which can me which can make up my mind that okay it's okay Stuti you know today let's just do this and then tomorrow you can you know balance it out mm -hmm. so it happens like uh, it affects your social life my friends and everyone they're always complaining that oh, hey, you always say no for movies in the night you always say no during the week but then they don't know that for that eight hours I have to be sharp I can't be sleepy when I'm mm -hmm. training my client right so I think I have I have a very much balanced life mm -hmm. like whether it's my family whether it's my husband, whether they are my friends, they know that Stuti will not budge. She will go home, <laughs> whatever it is. And I think uh, you need a partner who understands that. Mm. So I think even I don't have to say, Harsha Gujarke, it's 10, guys, sorry. <laughs> Idhar tak hi hai. That's nice. No, because I think you can't function. You mm. can't function uh, like, you know, the way you want to if you are less on sleep. And I tell that to my clients, they don't mm. sleep well. And I'm like, guys, this is what is not letting you reach your goals. You know, not, I'm just not important. talking about uh, physical goals or like professional, mm. but overall, you need your sleep, you need mm. your food, like two things I will never give up, whatever it is, whatever, your food and your sleep, everything else ho jayega. but if these two things doesn't happen right, it actually affects you, which mm. you don't realize it. Because you know, when you are young, you don't think about it, you're like, Aray, tomorrow we can just catch up doesn't work like that body mm. doesn't work on that body's clock is set mm. so that also doesn't work that you sleep at one in the night and then you get up at 10 mm -hmm. thinking my eight nine hours are done that yeah. also doesn't work so your body cycle has to be like 10 10 30 it has to be set and mm. you know you can mold your body how you want to same if you make it do bad habits, it's going to be like that. If you do True. good habits, it's going to be like that. Yeah, yeah. Until I remember myself, I've always been like that. I'm assuming my parents would have fit into it at some point. But I think my work also involves getting up in the morning, right? So mm. somewhere, though it's in my hands, I am only taking the morning clients. I can decide of taking a 10.30 client, True. to be very honest. Yeah. But my work, I know that it requires, like people have to get done in the mm. mornings right mm. so i cannot start my day late but yeah. that is something it has to be very strong headed that you yeah. have to do it okay so you were saying that uh, you have your employees or you have your team of physiotherapists 
whom you teach personally. So there is this uh, thing which I was recently discussing with someone is delegation of work. Yeah. For certain people, it's really hard to delegate their work. And for some people, it's very mm. easy, mm. maybe because they are lazy or mm. I'll give them benefit of doubt that, you know, they are smart mm. enough to delegate yeah. the right work. Yeah. Uh, what, what What is it about you? Like, is it hard for you? Is it easy for you? I think it has always been hard for me because I started as one person, right? And then I added the team. So I think my husband still tells me that um, I'm not that great at delegating stuff. Mm. But I've started doing that since all these years. So now there are a few things I still can't do it because I'm super, I have that OCD in my nature. So I have to do it. Mm. So even if I tell people to do that, I will go and check once that, okay, mm. is it done? Mm. But mm. now what I'm trying to do is I'll tell someone to check for me. Okay. And report me. Okay. But I think I, yeah. So I think I've changed. I was not like this. But I have changed because now I know that I can't spend my energy in this, which someone else can mm. do it for me. I would rather spend my energy in creating a better programs for my clients. One, mm. teaching my team rather than getting all in the mess. Mm. So I think uh, it's one of the most difficult things when you are into quality because you don't want that even one thing to go haywire. Mm. But you can still do that by making sure there is one more person whose job is to make sure whatever you have said is done or not which I'm doing at this point. <laughs> okay. So, but no, I, I, I have never been so comfortable with it. I'll be very honest. Mm -hmm. But now I am. And I think it really depends on your team also. Mm. So when you have a good team, when you have created, and actually there's never a good team, you have to create a good create team. Create a good team. So once you create that good team, they are also on the same. So I never tell that I have 14 therapists. I always say that we are a team of 14 therapists. So I tell my physios that even I'm an employee of Kotaki. Mm. I'm also working for Kotaki. Yeah. I'm just a founder. Yeah. But other than that, I'm also doing sessions as you are doing. Mm. Everything is same. I'm just working a little more because I have to create the programs of yours also, mm. other than my clients. Mm. I have to see the consultations. I have to, I take all the inquiries at Kotaki, 99% of the inquiries, yeah. because I feel that when I talk to a client, it's very different, right? Even if it's first time, mm. then someone else talking to them. Because you know that experience of making them understand, mm -hmm. yeah, if I'm not available, anyone can do it. But all that just comes to your list. Mm -hmm. But then now I've decided, okay, I'll talk to that person. But sending the information, someone can do. Yeah. I don't need to send the information. So like that, I've started delegating a lot of things. And with two locations, I have to. Yeah, of course. So it's impossible because mm -hmm. I'm not there both the places at the same time. Mm. So I think that has really, you know, worked right. two locations. <laughs> okay. So now I will take this converse, uh, conversation in a different way by discussing some hot fitness topic. Okay. Uh, first of all, you might be hearing a lot of people talking about people, uh, they gaining weight right. during their trips, during right. their vacations. Right. Uh, even I do. Hmm. What is your take on it? Do you want to give any uh, tips to us? To be very honest, Krishna, no one should gain weight on a trip. Because if you think about it, like even if you're here mm. and you are eating whatever food, even if you go on a trip, mm. normal stuff only you're going to eat. Yeah. Right? One. Yeah. Secondly, when you are here, the physically, physically, you are not that active other than the exercise. But when you are on a trip, mm. I'm assuming that we walk more. Yeah. So ideally, technically, you should not gain weight. Now I'll tell you the reasons why people gain weight. Because I have friends around me. Okay. I have my husband around me who gains <laughs> weight. <laughs> people start with their breakfast, which is either to itna kam khate, people hardly eat breakfast yeah. here. Exactly. Then you want to eat everything in your breakfast. That's not impossible. You yeah. can't eat everything. Yeah. You have to eat the same portion. Secondly, mm. the timings. So I, even like when I travel, uh, I'll have two meals. But like we went to Bombay, okay, now the table was at 11.30 in the night. Now, not mm. like impossible that I can be like hungry till 11.30 because we have booked a table for 11.30. Yeah. I ordered in-room service at 8. <laughs> I had my dinner and then my friend also saw that I was already like, even I'm hungry little. <laughs> so she also had it, then someone else came and then I said, okay, someone had a little bit. And then at 11, 30, 12, we had food. Mm. But then that, your stomach is not like, when you are hungry for a long time, that acidic reaction starts, right? Mm. Your gut health starts getting weaker. Mm. And then you bombard it with everything, mm. whether it's drinks or food or sugar, everything. 
so that's where your body is not burning the calories it's going like all haywire the next day and then you feel bloated on a trip for which you were doing all the menus to be really you know fit and yeah. toned and lean so one of the major reason is your food i don't say don't eat but i say just be watchful of your timings you don't need to be hungry just because you want to hog you eat it right now you won't be so hungry so when you eat you will be more mindful hmm. mindful whether you are like in your house or whether you are traveling has to be there hmm. so this is one of the major reason i feel people gain weight see hormones and everything of course it's very different story so i wouldn't get into it at this point but there are a lot of things which are in our hands so you know you you just have to be basic mindful that if i'm eating it's not that my breakfast has to be this much my lunch has to be this much hmm. whatever you want to eat but you don't want to overeat hmm. just because mentally yeah. you feel you are on a trip yeah and you want to be physically active like i love to be doing at least one session of exercise because here i don't get that much time because i'm always training hmm. people and all and even if i get time i've had other 100 things to do hmm. so i also tell myself that i'm making excuse i can just not do two things today i can do tomorrow and i can just exercise yeah. right but there because i don't have anything on my mind So I would make sure to do even if it's thirty minutes, which I tell all my clients that you have to give that thirty mm. minutes. Uh, Trana, that's the beautiful places you go to. Yeah, I think uh, since I have adapted fitness, yeah, in my routine, after that all the trips wherever I go, I also try to do at least ten minutes, fifteen exactly. minutes, either yes. yoga Perfect. or maybe a quick cardio. Yes, but. You know, it came. It started coming in my mind once I adapted the yeah. fitness routine in here yes. at my hometown. Hmm, hmm. Yeah. But then I tell people that why do we think that these two things are different? Why our lifestyle is changing? Hmm. You're just going to a different location. Hmm. Your life cannot change. Your lifestyle cannot change. Hmm. You still eat the same food. Of course, it's an outside food, but you still eat same quantity. Yeah, yeah. You might quantity. add a dessert. We have to think about the quantity. Yeah, I don't say that. Yeah, just eat one roti. But eating two roti, everything like you should be full, but you cannot hog mm. just because you are on a trip. Mm. Because when you do that, when you come back, you again have to eat less, and then again you are in that stress of losing weight, mm. and again वो थोड़ा हुआ, then again you are traveling, so mm. you are in that vicious circle. Mm. So to get out of it, whether wherever you are. your lifestyle shouldn't change the day you decide that you will never have issues of gaining weight ever i think that is a really a mindset shift exactly like maintain that lifestyle or maintain that portion maybe you try new things of course you are going to try new of cuisines course. when you are going of out course. but always remember about the quantity yeah. and give 15 to 30 minutes for your uh, exactly. fitness workout yeah anything you can just go for a walk Yeah, but then if you just don't do anything, and if you keep eating, you mm. will feel bloated, mm. and you won't enjoy that feeling, even if you had a very good food. To be mm. very honest, yeah. because then you don't feel good about Been yourself, there. right? So I would rather say that having good feeling is more important than hogging on food. <laughs> so I think somewhere that balance. It's mm. all about balance. It's I always all, feel, yeah, true. and I, I'm not the person who tells that don't eat this, don't eat this. Of course, you are on a trip. Eat everything. but just be mindful that mm. are you hungry that's why you are eating or you're just eating because someone ordered and you are just feeling bored <laughs> because there there are oh, two yeah, things oh yeah that is so true <laughs> about like people yeah. are bored and so they wanna exactly. you know just order yeah. something and so true. because we have nothing to do exactly. i'll just order chip and dip so, yeah. so it's all mind game right you are not hungry but just because you want to be actively involved or whatever mm. you just want to be awake anything you are just mm. eating for it but yeah. then what if you train your mind that mm. this is not going to keep me awake yeah me just not doing anything and just getting involved in the talk is also going to be equally you know fun yeah food cannot be so it's all like how food has been created a thing which trains your mind ke, okay if i'll eat i'll feel good mm. if i won't eat i might feel bad like people tell me that stress eating I'm very happy I eat. I'm very sad I eat. I never mm. feel all that because I've never created food connection to my emotions. Mm. And I think that's something which, as a kid, also our parents have never told us when we were yeah. sad. चलो खा लो because you are sad, or you know you you are very happy. Let's eat. Let's celebrate and uh, eat some uh, junk food. So no celebration is fine. That okay you passed. Okay let's go out to eat. But just at home we never did that. Right now people do it. Right. home you are mm. not feeling good you just eat chips 
or jam. Mm. You eat ice cream. We have never done as kids. And I, I think it's also promoted. Ice creams have promoted that. And the movies. Here is a tub yeah, for yeah. you because you are movies. crying. <laughs> And now it's such a fancy thing to have that tub. I fancy the tub. I actually want to try that. Do you know? That's one of my checklists. <laughs> I want to sit uh, in front of a movie and just have an ice cream tub and want to eat. I want to just feel that. How does that feel? My people I'll are tell so you. So what it. it feels? It feels wonderful when you are okay. eating. Okay. And after an hour, I feel guilty. That see, I have reasons to be sad. Now I added one more reason one more. to be guilty. <laughs> so true. We are increasing that part. Just next day, you'll be like, let me burn this. And then you will do extra work. Yeah. And then again, yeah. the other day, you'll be like, oh God, nothing is happening on my body. I can't see that, what I'm yeah. working towards. And all. Yeah. I'm basically a vicious circle, yeah. I personally feel. Okay. Uh, another uh, topic which uh, everyone is talking about is gut health. Yeah. And uh, suddenly, that term has gained a lot of popularity. <laughs> What is uh, your take on it? Like, is there any tips or anything which you would give for people to maintain their gut health? So, I think uh, what we were just discussing before is actually getting us to gut health, to mm. be very honest. That, as, as I said, your routine cannot change mm. because the timings of your eating and everything actually cleans your gut, right? Mm. So, if I'm eating late night, very late, then of course my whole body clock cycle is changing. Yeah. Now there are a lot of foods your gut can easily digest. Mm. And there are a lot of foods it cannot. So like me at this point also, I don't eat breads. I only eat breads if I've gone out and I'm eat, eating a sandwich just one fine day. But we never get breads at home. Oh. Because I think my, I remember my parents putting in my head as a kid that you cannot digest manda. Mm -hmm. And I still mm -hmm. believe in it. So I will not. Um, even pizza, I know that okay, I like pizza, but I think I will eat maybe once in a month and that too not as a food which is my direct dinner or lunch. Mm. I'll have it as a side thing, mm. not something where I'm eating whole pizza mm. and I'm not doing it for weight. So don't get me wrong there. I'm not at all thinking about weight, but what I'm thinking is about my gut health. Mm. That if this is not getting digested because they say that three days it takes time to digest a manda. Oh. So imagine your stomach has to go through so much mm -hmm. and I think because now with so much of food, so much of alcohol and everything, I think the gut health is going really down plus sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So there are two things. One is your food which helps your gut health and one is your activity level. Mm -hmm. So when this both are not that good in mm -hmm. youngsters also I'm talking about, I'm not talking about at all people in 30s or 40s, I'm talking about like someone who's 14 year old because I see a client who's 12 year old. I see a client who's 81 year old. So I know that, you know, it's not about age anymore. People having IBD, IBS, which is like, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, which is all connected to your gut health. People are getting that so frequently, which I have never heard it before. Mm. Why it is happening? It's not just happening because random one day, you know, your body just said. It is that gradually it's happening and mm. your body can't take it anymore. Mm. Because we feel that just because we are young, we can digest things, we can do anything what we want. Mm. But then we are not really taking care of our future years. So when five years down the line, if we feel some things, we feel we will be like, I ate very healthy. But that healthy was maybe 50% of the time. But that other 50%, you have to be 70, 80% healthy and then 20, 30% junk. Mm. But it's the other way around. I don't see people eating like every day, like three portions of vegetable, uh, four to five yeah. portions of protein, where it is yeah. yellow chana or, you know, like a uh, moong pani or paneer, whatever. We are not doing that what we used to do as a kid. Mm. So are this all fancy food, which are said that they are very healthy and all. I don't believe in that. I believe in like whatever you have eaten as a kid or while you were growing up, you still need to eat that. Mm. So coming to that, like I, I believe that I love wheat, okay? Oh, and I have never stopped eating wheat because I know all my clients ask me, Kage, uh, uh, can I eat wheat?" Yeah, mm. someone who wants to really lose weight and obesity, they are falling into that. I tell them to not because it's not getting digested that great. Mm. But that doesn't mean that you can't eat. Mm. So I think it's all about like not just that one meal; it has to be the whole day, which decides your gut health. So if I'm putting like 80% good food and 20% bad, the 20% bad is also going to affect. Mm -hmm. But then it's going to affect lesser. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing this the other way, mm -hmm. that I had a very bad day at eating and then I think that in the evening I'll eat a salad. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> to compensate. It just doesn't work like that. Yeah. So people tell me that, that okay, tomorrow I have a party, so today evening I'm not going to eat. I'm like, that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> tomorrow, whatever you are going to eat is tomorrow. Today is today. Mm. Body doesn't understand that. Your brain doesn't think like that. Okay, mm. Today my 500 cal calories are less used, so I'll use those calories tomorrow. It's per day. Mm. So I think I it's really a holistic think approach. It is a holistic approach. Yeah, yeah. It has to be a balanced holistic approach, which can be sustainable in a longer term. Mm. And gut health has to be the first and foremost priority. Mm. And gut health, when you exercise, mm. you improve. Mm. When you are active, you improve. When you mm. eat good food, you improve. When you eat fiber, you improve. Mm. So all those things are going to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually my next question was going to be that, that it's very, uh, again, it's very trending that people are replacing wheat with ragi and jawar. Like almost everyone is interested in that. So you, do you do that? And so uh, I think I, I feel very okay with the wheat. I've never felt that I can't digest wheat. So I've never tried anything else. Bajri I eat because once or twice a week we eat bajri, rotlo and all of mm -hmm. that. But I think for people whom digestion is a big problem. Hmm. Then for them, maybe jowar, ragi, but then when I see them eating jowar, ragi, and then they're eating unhealthy stuff, hmm. then it's going to be same. Hmm. It has to be then everything like that. Hmm. Then I would say eat wheat and don't eat the other thing. Hmm. So I, I, I take a lot of clients, I'm giving them like a no, no wheat because in them there is an issue of not getting digested. Hmm. And then they fall into that obese category, for example. So for them, it's compulsory. Mm. There are a few people they're very used to with not eating wheat because somewhere you know done all the diets and everything. So I'm like, okay, if you're really comfortable with it, but I don't say that don't eat wheat. Mm. It's okay to eat wheat once yeah. in a day. That's completely fine. But you can't have four roti. You have mm. one or two roti mm. of wheat. Mm. But it's just too much. I feel we are overusing our brain where it's not necessary. I feel mm. at times. We should rather focus more on creating more balance in mm, the food mm. rather than substituting things. Mm, yeah. Uh, I see a lot of ads on uh, social media about uh, the vitamin tablets, the supplements, the protein powders. Do you take any of it? And uh, I don't take any of it. I'm just taking vitamin B because it was very low when I just recently got it checked, which I okay. feel everyone's it's low. Yeah. But uh, that's the only thing I take that also someone like physician who had mm -hmm. recommended. Uh, I don't believe in protein shake, a big no okay. for me. And I don't let my clients also take it. So Why so? I think I feel that our body cannot digest the natural protein, first mm -hmm. of all. So I don't think at all that the whey protein is going to be digested, mm -hmm. one. Secondly, you are not an athlete that you mm -hmm. need. You are doing that four or five hour of training that you need that. Hmm. For an athlete, for sure. We had dealt with, you know, athletes before, like, mm -hmm. you know, when uh, we were seeing them for an injury. So I know that their routine is very different. They mm -hmm. like have to, their exercise program is four to five hours. So there, the doctor have recommended them to take a protein shake, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing one hour, max two hours, which is like one hour of exercise program and one hour of walk, it's not exhausting. Though mm -hmm. you feel it, but you don't need, you can actually have five to six different forms of protein, which can give you a lot of your content. Mm -hmm. But again, coming back to that, that I don't say that if I'm weighing 50 kilos, I need 50 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm a Jain, vegetarian, I know that I'm not going to be able to reach that 50 yeah. grams. Then I need to keep trying rather than just opting for a shake, you know, protein shake, where I don't know whether it's going to get digested one. Because a lot of times when it doesn't get digested, mm. it actually creates pressure on your kidneys, one. Mm. Secondly, it changes into your fat deposition. Mm. So all that we are not understanding that. And third, it actually creates a lot of constipation and a lot of stomach issues. Mm. So your activity has to be that where you really need a protein shake. Not just for the fanciness of it, which I feel right now everyone wants to have protein shake. Because yeah, true course because the way they are really doing it and I, I know that a lot of people have come to me and they're like we have this products would you like to you know of course you know people now do that mm -hmm. I'm like sorry I don't believe into it and I don't take it so I'm never going to put it on my mm -hmm. you know face that okay this is you know you know so you would rather prefer that we eat certain eat food which would give you the protein yes. but also I would say that you know if you are a vegetarian 
uh, I mean that's what I have heard about it True. that if you're a vegetarian it's very hard to get hard. those proteins and True. that is why uh, people uh, tell you to have that protein shake so that also I have seen that people who have protein shakes anyways they never used to eat protein they used to just have dal. Mm. now one cup of dal can never give you protein mm. you're getting my point that even people who used to eat eggs pure din mein they used to eat two eggs mm. now that two eggs is not enough Mm. You need to have five to six meals of proteins, which can be yellow chana, which can be moong pani, which can be salad, which is sprouts and pulses. It can be paneer, it can be tofu. So it can't be one thing which gives you that much protein. Mm. Number of things, because that is going to get digested much better than an actual protein shake. Mm. But again, coming to that, that what kind of activity you are into it? Mm. Are you really of that kind of activity where you are really mm. burning that three hours of calories? Mm. Like very intense form. Then mm. yes, but otherwise no, because mm. then like down the lane after five years, you don't know what's going to happen on your kidneys. And if it was so good, why are the doctors not recommending it? My that question is, oh yeah, why physician, the best thing they have to just try it, that mm -hmm. to have this protein powder. But we are not giving, it's all, it's all outside commercials which is giving you all that. Yeah. Right? Doctors should recommend because they are which are giving the worst protein come here, so that's why the bones are getting, you know, weak and all of yeah. that. But they are not recommending. They are recommending an elder age group which is like a protein powder which has very, you know, like half scoop and all. Mm. But which is not this commercial protein powder. It's yeah. very like, you know, traditional. Yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. So yeah. I think no, I, I I strongly like since twelve years I'm still sticking to that that no. You have to do an extra effort to eat first, mm. which no one does it. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what do you do if you get midnight cravings? Uh, to be honest, I sleep by 10, 30, 11. <laughs> I don't get midnight cravings. But on days like Saturdays, um, when you're awake till very late, mm. and I indulge, like I love desserts, mm. so I would eat. Mm. But I think um, I never indulge in heavy foods in midnight. Because I feel that um, it doesn't get digested and it's in my head also now. Mm. That you know if I'm eating this, even just for the fun element because everyone is eating. So let me also eat to mm. the indulge. But it's not suiting me there. And I can sense that. So I feel very uneasy. You know you feel it. Even you don't tell others. But you feel it. Mm. That okay how do you feel when you eat that. Mm. So I feel one and foremost is to be mindful. I just select what I eat. I'll have sugar. So I'll eat a dessert a bit, but I'll never eat heavy fried or rice stuff or because that's very heavy at the night. Mm. So I think, but I, I to be very honest, I don't get cravings because I think I sleep early. I think it's about the awareness. Awareness, maybe? It's about training your mind. Yeah. Maybe it's very hard in the start, it is. but yes. eventually, I think uh, when you've already trained your mind, yeah. it will be easy exactly. for you to stop yourself from True. those uh, cravings or maybe even if I put a beautiful decorated dish in front of you, you are full, you wouldn't True. eat it. But people like me would at least try I'll, a few I'll chips. Try. I'll try one, but I'll stop at one. Yeah. My husband won't. <laughs> okay. And then I'll be like whole night, I'll be like, Harsha, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop. And everyone will be like, Stuti yaar, it's Saturday, <laughs> let him eat on Saturday. <laughs> And I'm like, always, always this is what is happening. Okay. But no, I think I feel that, I tell my friends also, I'm like, dude, do you have any idea what you're eating right now? <laughs> you already ate. So it's it's because people are not aware. They're not aware. People are not educated about it. No, they are. But they feel that Saturday night hai. No, but you see, that, that's, that's what I'm saying, that if you educate them about the holistic approach, yeah. you yeah. educate them about uh, the way you were saying mm -hmm. ki, you know, uh, if you eat that one time late at the night, then what is going to happen? True. If people know the consequences, maybe they can adapt that lifestyle. People know the consequences, to be very honest, Vishra, but they forget very easily. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, because if I felt that, that stomach upset, even for that next day, I'd be like, oh my God, I can't have this feeling. I would rather never eat than having this feeling. And I think it really affects uh, your efficiency, right? The other mm. day, because when you don't feel good, you feel very low, mm. lethargic. And I don't like myself but, even one. Uh, see, we all also might be getting the other day, you know, that type yeah. of feeling. 
but then again people tend to do that again do that same i know i know so i believe the core of it would be uh, making people more aware about true, it true. making that a trend the way the supplements and uh, the protein yeah. powders are trending yeah. why not this education be trending so true conscious effort basically mindfulness so true mindfulness so true. towards your food yes so i am very happy when my client will message me in the part in like so the i didn't touch today anything <laughs> and i'll be like oh my god that's an amazing thing because um it's a lot of pressure to be very honest because when you don't eat hmm. people pressurize you like anything i know yeah and i'm very strong headed so i i don't feel at all that pressure hmm. but it's it there are very few people who wouldn't feel it everyone else will like okay people are saying so much let me just eat little hmm. you know it's very natural yeah. thing So mm. I feel that also plays a major role. That you know, if someone is telling you five times, seven times, then you'll be like, okay, let me just eat. Mm. Even if I'm not hungry, I'll just eat. Yeah. But to stay there and tell, you know, I just can't eat. Mm. I'm really full. Mm. You know, to that that is very tough. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Uh, in the uh, era of social media, how do you keep your sanity when in your field? everyone would be posting about their work i think not only in your field in all everyone. of the field uh, it's like a competitive world created inside social media hmm. so how do you maintain your sanity do you post and like do you keep on doing that doom scrolling and uh, you know because everyone is doing true, it true 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 so how do you feel that uh, about Asha, that i've never been someone um for whom social media was something that i have to do it mm. i love doing it so okay. one thing it's very two different things where you are doing it because you have to and you are doing it because you love to mm. i love using social media for my work mm. but i will never so i'm not someone who consumes a lot of content i'm a person who puts up a lot of content mm. and uh, i feel that it's very important that my for me uh, instagram for example i'm very active on instagram on kotak in and even as my page hmm. i believe in creating awareness so my very very important thing in my head i've fit in is that i'm using instagram to aware people hmm. so i even when i see the post and reels i feel very excited and i feel like yeah even i want to do this hmm. but then i know that i cannot because one I have I don't have that time because right now I'm handling on my own for example and I know that this is what is important right now and this is what I'm doing which I'm very happy about it but I never get influenced I would feel that oh this is really good I should be doing it hmm. so I'll keep in mind that list that you know maybe once you know I have the time I should think about doing this also hmm. but it never affects me never because for me i'm very happy that instagram actually is really going out there my content mm-hmm. and making people aware Mm. which i feel somewhere instagram is uh, used in both ways one to make that feeling good Mm-mm. but it makes you feel bad also mm. if it's yeah, your true. mind is not right if you're not being mindful yes because mm. then you're constantly looking and scrolling mm. and then you are like hey yeah, what am i doing what is this because i keep hearing around me and i'm like why why we don't like you have so much else to do mm. why would you sit there so mm. for me instagram so i have kept a thing so 30 minutes is the max So I kept it actually 10 15 minutes initially but then I had to do 30 because when I'm posting it takes a lot of your time mm. so even if I go on the Instagram then you know so that way I've kept actually 20 is right now my limit so 20 minutes it's done it's done then I'll do Netflix anything but not Instagram right so I think you have to otherwise it's it's something it's like an ocean you can't come out of it. you can't come out of so it i'm just being mindful of it to be very honest even i like to just keep doing it mm. but no i'm just being very so mindful. one of my friend uh, she gave me a very interesting hmm. tip that was uh, you know she unfollowed hmm. certain people hmm. who were toxic for her like for example kylie jenner she unfollowed her because she kept she's so huh. fit she's so fit yeah. but then uh, my mm. friend used mm. to think that i'm not fit mm. i've seen her she's so strong and fit mm. but after seeing certain uh, reels mm. or certain mm. pictures mm. of people like kali jenner True. she gets this feeling that you know i need to do more i'm not doing enough and she goes into that toxic uh, yeah your mind thing. yeah, yeah. So what she did it uh, did is she unfollowed certain people Perfect. and now whatever she gets on her feed is some positive stuff that that's the best thing i've yeah. done it 
so a lot of times i've followed people and then i feel that okay this is not the content i want to see not of feeling bad or good but i feel that this is not something which i want to see when i get up in the morning uh, mm-hmm. you know after half an hour or so mm-hmm. when i check my instagram this is not what i want to start my day with or end my day with mm-hmm. so I, i unfollowed people mm-hmm. at the same time what i feel is um when you put content mm-hmm. out there mm-hmm. you need to know that for what you're doing that same if you're consuming your content from someone your friends or whatever mm-hmm. you need to know you can't just keep scrolling i mm-hmm. i feel i know it's very difficult but because if you start doing that and if you don't think about it mm. you actually are giving up so much of your time which you won't realize at all in that that 10 15 minutes you could have read a book to right you could have done like any stupid thing also i yeah. would say but then instagram i feel that it has to be just taken in a right way mm. you just cannot uh, because i i think the younger generation you get very much affected which i'm okay. very like like i have a lot of people who message me this okay and i feel you know a little bad they are like sthiti you eat so much like because i put desserts and food and all of that so how how you don't gain weight and then i i started putting like a small like you know tag below when i post that mm. guys i'm putting a cake picture i'm not eating whole cake yeah i'm just eating a piece out of it yeah. so i felt very wrong that oh my god i'm putting this content out just like that mm. people are taking it in a wrong way maybe mm. they're feeling that oh my god she eats everything and she's like this and we are eating and we are like this so then i didn't feel good about it because then i felt that no it has they, they need to know mm. but still people feel that i just keep i just post pictures i don't eat and i'm like no it's not that <laughs> i'm just eating a small portion out of it but of course i can't take out that portion yeah. and take a picture yeah, so yeah. <laughs> i think again education for yes. social media awareness towards social yeah. media mindfulness towards, towards social, social media, media. exactly yeah. yeah. because everything is um, useless mm-hmm. if you don't know how to use it mm-hmm. if you really think about it like yeah. social media is amazing like i, I love instagram because um, I also when I watch something I really get inspired. Hmm. Same way if I like I feel that a lot of people message me like you know so they, they don't know me and very randomly people come to me and they say I follow your page and I really find it very interesting and hmm. I really like what so those things are both like I feel that this is what I want to do hmm. it for. Like you know so you need to know what you're putting so I feel very responsible when I post a single story or a post. Hmm. I don't randomly put anything. I put things uh, where I feel that okay, someone if they are seeing this, they feel good about it, hmm. like that. So <laughs> see, you are being responsible yeah. in during posting, but yeah. not everyone is. Of course. And, and so then, yeah. on the other side, true. we have to be mindful so and understand that exactly. what is good for us and what is not. So, so take the positive yeah. things and let the negative things go. And it's very okay to unfollow. I feel when you don't feel good about it, it's a yeah. vibe, right? Yeah. If you don't like vibe of a person you wouldn't meet that person every other day yeah. to be very honest same way is the instagram why yeah. would i see every other hour if i am not liking what they are posting yeah i mean yeah. they would be doing great they would, they be, would be like very vibe. beautiful exactly just yeah. like your vibe because i feel see whenever someone post it's our perception that this is not right mm. okay because i also feel that some things if i would have posted people would feel care if i she posting this mm. or same way when i see something i feel okay why are you posting this but it's a perception so if mm. i feel that this is not what i believe into mm. i should not keep following that person because then you get very uh, anxious mm. about it mm. True. but yeah social media though like amazing like overall mm. but still i feel that we are overusing it in a wrong way mm. everyone Hmm. from a kid <laughs> to a 80 year old also on the instagram yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay i think uh, we had a wonderful conversation and i got all my answers so to glass. all the uh, trending hot topics <laughs> of fitness uh, thank you so much for coming thank you from It your busy pleasure. routine thank you thank you so much trishla <laughs>